that's trained properly, knows what they're doing, to have protection with them, to be able to protect not only themselves, but everyone around. I completely understand where you're coming from, but I'm just going to say that I do disagree. Um, so just uh, first and foremost, thank you guys for being willing to discuss an issue that's as contentious as uh, gun rights can be. It's definitely a very hot-headed issue at times. Um, I just want to get a clarification on a couple of terms that have been used just for the sake of making this an even more clear discussion. Um, there have been three terms so far that I've caught that have been used without clarification. One is assault weapon, uh, two is military-grade weapon, and three is assault rifle. If the, if those who are up here, anyone can answer this, could you guys clarify those and explain why they're being used in you know different ways and right. you know what the bearing on the conversation is of those three terms? Okay, so an assault rifle is a weapon that is capable of firing between 20 to 50 rounds, depending on the magazine size. A machine gun is capable of large box magazines and a firing belt. So basically, it just gets fed right through the whole. Um, the whole gun is 50 rounds plus, and it pretty much always has a full automatic. You can just hold it and it just sprays. Assault rifles are usually like three round bursts or the option of a fully automatic weapon. Yeah, they, they really shouldn't be used interchangeably. Any other terms? We apologize for the um, differentiating terms, but we're just talking about anything with a high capacity um, uh, possible. Anything that has the possibility of being high capacity. I think that's that's kind of part of the confusion of the argument too. Is that a lot of the sides they like to convey <coughs> terms. Not saying you guys do purposefully, but you know, a lot of this is just politicized jargon. You know, that's what it turns into is this idea that assault weapon, assault rifle. I mean, assault weapon or military grade weapon is just a way of saying, oh, this gun looks scary. You know, because there's there's military grade weapons out there that have been passed on bills that the only difference between a legal one and illegal one is a grip on the on the handle. Um, I think that was in Boxer, or Farmer Boxer's bill a couple of years ago after Sandy. Um, I mean, it, it's, and again, it just turns into this, this ridiculous restriction and we're gonna, these group of people are gonna say, look, this is what we're gonna arbitrarily pick and these guys, yeah, they, they can't have them. So we're gonna get our friends over here with all the big guns and they're gonna take their guns away. And just one more, one more term that's been used, particularly by the college Democrats. Um, what's a high capacity magazine? You can explain that to me. Anything with the possibility of murdering. Um, to be completely honest with you, I am not um, completely positive. I do know that the military grade weapons are anything with, an, um, or at least in my knowledge, is anything with the capacity to shoot over 10 um, rounds, and that's what we're referring to right now. A handgun shoots more than 10 rounds. Right. I don't consider a weapon an assault. Like, I don't consider rifles assault rifles unless that's what they're used for, assault. If they're not used for assault, then they're not assault weapons to make. Okay, um, that's right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, um, I was just, I had a question for the college Democrats. Um, are gun-free zones, do you believe that gun-free zones are effective? Um, can you explain it further in depth? Like, um, areas, like public, Institutions and uh, honestly, I do agree that, that it's a uh, safe zone as long as there is a safety patrol. As long as there is a safety patrol, well, then if if gun-free zones are effective, then why is it that most mass shootings happen in gun-free zones? So that's not answers? necessarily um, an issue. We're never talking about taking away guns, but um, we do believe in the background checks. A lot of the gun-free zones have to do more so with mental health um, discrepancies, um, more so than anything else. Okay, um, I heard a lot of a lot of things being tossed around. Um, it, it really led me to one question: How comfortable are you with legislators making legislation based on things they have very limited knowledge of? Joseph Biden, for example, once said that it's easier for a woman to handle a 12 gauge shotgun than it is an AR-15. If you've ever fired both of them, you'd know it's easier to handle the AR-15. We also have legislators from both the Republican and Democrat Party saying that magazine clips, they call them magazine clips, are bullets. These people have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, and yet we're completely comfortable letting them make decisions. They've never fired a gun. They have no idea what assault weapon means. Like he was saying, in, what was it? Is it a 2121B? 
the assault weapons ban, a Ruger Mini 14 with a car with a um, composite stock is considered an assault weapon. A Ruger Mini 14 ranch rifle with a wooden stock is not. Same capacity magazine, they look different. If it has a collapsible stock, it's considered an assault weapon. If it has a stationary stock, it's not. If it can mount a bayonet, it's an assault weapon. If it can't, it's not. <laughs> We're allowing these people to create legislation based on how a weapon looks. Not only that, but why should I allow a legislator to tell me how many rounds I need to defend myself? If a man comes at me, if a man comes at me with a Glock 17 with 19 rounds in the magazine, and I can only have 10, what, what's fair in that? I have to say, um, just in regards to saying what um, experience do legislators have in this regard, um, I have to say that most legislators are um, previous servants of the armed forces and so forth. So most of them, not all of them, I will agree with you on that, do have a lot of experience working and handling um, high-grade weapons. So um, other than that, what's another type of expert that would be qualified to make legislation? Politicians don't know much about education and our education system is horrible. But just in this case, just examples in this case, of, just in this case. of legislators who have um, but I'm just saying service, prior service. I'm just curious who you're who you're referring to. Um, Joe Sestak, he was a third three-star admiral, and he was just retiring from the seventh district. Is that the only one? The only one that I know of. Murphy. Murphy. Um, yeah, I didn't even. Think. I don't know if it's a majority, but this is a It's not a majority, but like um, the thing with the legislative branch is that you're not going to have every single person in the House, in the Senate, um, all having the exact same qualifications. So you do have a diversified range, um, just as a little tidbit. What I'm saying is that most of the people who have made the biggest waves in gun control or gun safety, however you want to call it. Most of these people have not served, served in the armed forces, okay. have not fired weapons themselves, and have obviously, to anyone else who has fired a gun or anyone else who knows guns, when they speak, they obviously have no idea what they're talking about. And these are the people who are making the biggest waves in gun control. That is the issue I have. Are you comfortable with that? Um, I believe that's a really um, opinion-based statistic. Um, just being said, you don't necessarily know if somebody, um, gun use is something that is used on the civilian level as well. So you don't necessarily know their prior record with it. Um, and everybody has differences of opinions on how well versed somebody else is. So just um, as my opinion. But hey, we're gonna take another question. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Tom Andrak, Students for Liberty. I, I, I just want to say, like, I, I fully agree we shouldn't have um, regulations on guns, but, like, government uh, officials, when they make legislation, usually will have committees with experts. Uh, they just don't do very well. So, like, I sort of agree with your point, and that's why government tends to do horribly on everything, because they bring in experts that think they're experts and they're not. So, I mean, I, I, I'm just saying, like, I agree with your point that government officials, politicians usually have no idea what they're talking about on every topic, including guns. But um, I would say, like, they, they do get so-called experts to, you know, try. They just, the politicians themselves usually don't know what they're talking about. But this is, this is what scares us, is this, this idea that we have an unaccountable people on the Hill in Washington. I mean, you could say democracy and, yeah, 51, 49%, you know, uh, they got voted in, but come on, I mean, let's be realistic here. They just try to get elected into the next seat just so they can get their, you know, just keep winning elections. I mean, there's not a person here that doesn't understand that. We understand the cyclical problem with people, lifetime politicians who just don't make a difference. And these are the people that are passing legislation that drastically and dramatically affects our lives. And I mean, this, this scares us. I mean, it's this idea that regardless of how many experts you have, is that one man or one woman in Washington can be the difference between what goes among 320 million people. We're saying. Let the 320 million people decide what's best for them. Okay. Um, take another. Okay. Um, Self-defense is a right. And anyone who's in danger has a right to defend themselves by any means. Let's go, you know, we talk about domestic. Um, let's, let's take a look at the, uh, let's go beyond our borders. Let's take a look at Iraq. Um, the Iraqis are, it's a gun-free country. Gun that is banned. 
look, look what happened with ISIS. ISIS comes over there and just wipes out the entire area. The only group in Iraq that have guns, the Kurds, are the only ones that could defend themselves. Imagine the United States, the extreme end of it, is being invaded. You think a gun-free country can defend itself for a country but all citizens are? And that would be a question to Democrats. We never advocated to have no guns. I just really want to make yeah. that clear. But we gun don't control leads to more gun control, leads to um, gun-free countries. Like mm -hmm. Okay, but here's the thing. It, uh, we are Democrats, so we do believe in big government. Um, so we do believe in having a military, whereas you said Iraq, right? Or, okay, Iraq right now is not a stable country, um, so they don't have the same uh, resources that we do. But again, we have no means said that we're limiting um, civilian use except for in high capacities. Your idea of high capacity was more than 10 rounds in a magazine. So. We can up it if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna take a if I can give you a simple fact, in the 113th Congress, sure. in the year 2013, 19% of the members of Congress served in the military. That means 81% did not. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there. Uh, I just had a question for the college Democrats. I don't know if anyone else has brought this up, but if you look at the crime statistics from the Justice Department, we can see that gun violence has been going down over the years and continues to go down. Uh, with that being the case, why is this even an urgency for the Democrat Party to talk about any gun legislation? If statistically and nationwide it's going down as a whole. Well, we can be talking about legislation. Um, statistically, there's, well, it depends what factors it's going down by. Is it going down by education? Um, so therefore, it, legislation to what, if that's the reason why it's going down, we can increase policies. Um, honestly, we're just talking about getting background checks. That's like our main premise of today, yeah. and everybody just, uh, <laughs> well, I, we really just want background checks, and we also, um, we want to do, have some restrictions, but it's not necessarily an unreasonable ask. Why do we have a driver's license? Because we need to know how to operate a car. And if you disagree with driver's licenses, then I understand your point. However, um, if so, there is a lot of restrictions that we do have. Um, we have insurance, we have other licenses that we need. We need a license to own a business. We need a license to open a hot dog stand down the street. There's a lot of regulations that we have. It's not unreasonable to be limiting something that has the capacity to do damage, more so than other restrictions. Okay. Well, I'm just curious, out of the six of you, how many of you own a firearm? <laughs> Good that was a pretty even yeah. set. Good question. Um, <laughs> how many of us I don't see how you can speak on a topic if you don't even own or use your rights. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to. Hey, I, I have something. Oops, sorry, sorry. You said um, about the driving versus insurance. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly, but go back like 50 years ago maybe, it wasn't mandatory to have car insurance. These restrictions keep piling, piling up, and that is kind of the point with what we're saying is that <coughs> we have these restrictions now. Do you 20 years from now, you have more restrictions, and the restrictions well, keep going up and down. The real question up. for you is, and this is just a personal question, do you believe in car insurance is a good thing? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's kind of my thing. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying that the restrictions are keep adding up. But if you people. believe they do something that's beneficial, then that is a restriction. Yeah. <laughs> what? I, mean, I, mean, I love car insurance. I don't want to get a car insurance. Right, but so when that's you, what I mean, you, for them. you force me to buy it, it's a different story. Because then you're right. going to put me at gunpoint and say you have okay, to buy it. Maybe not car insurance, for example, but vomit. do we force you, except for voter yeah, laws, vomit. to have a driver's license? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay, uh, because you want to vote for a driver car, correct? Yeah, that, I, yeah but I don't But like, there is the license. option not to. <laughs> okay, we're just going to take you. Sorry, you cutting off earlier. I just have two quick questions. Um. First one being, what is the gun show loophole? And the second would be, would these expansive background checks restrict personal sales of firearms? They're not expansive background checks. They're just enforcing the background checks that we have in place. 
um, besides the gun show loophole. The gun show loophole, um, as explained by the governor of Connecticut, um, in a simpler form, is that you can go to a gun show and there's a 14 day waiting period as is right now, um, just to get the certification back and the clearances have to process. But if you go to a gun show, you can purchase it on demand. Um, my experience with going to these gun shows is yeah. For every dealer that, that's on the floor trying to make their sales, there's another one, a partner, calling the Pennsylvania State Police, running background checks for these sales. Yeah, it does account for um, a smaller percentage. I will agree with you on that, that there is. But even so, having that percentage there is um, not something that we should be striving or keeping in place. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. You keep comparing this to cars. Can you show me in the Bill of Rights where it says you have the right to own a car? Well, going back to the point made earlier today, uh, the right to raise a militia is the purpose of bearing arms, correct? I'm sorry? The right to defend yourself against the government is the right, the reason why we have the right to own a car, guns. <coughs> right? Um, so at the time, first of all, when the Constitution was made, cars were not invented. So there's that factor. Um, but then on the second factor with that is that the point is a little bit mute now, now that we really don't have the opportunity to um, raise a militia against the currency of the military. Okay. Can I follow up to that? Sure. So are you saying we should limit free speech and television, radio, and uh, the internet? Not necessarily. What? <laughs> we do. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. We do. Unfortunately, but yeah, we do. The FCC. We don't, we're not saying it's right that we can't um, go against the military, but at this point, it's just something that we might need to work towards. Yes. I just wanted to bring up a point and then answer the question. Libertarians touched on it, and that's this the Constitution is based on natural law, which is based on natural rights. Mm -hmm. And then that, the Second Amendment is based on the natural right to defend yourself as an individual, your family, mm -hmm. your community, and your property. Okay, so the Constitution okay, that grants us the right to defend ourselves, not only just against you know, individual crime, but also against a corrupt government that's becoming increasingly more centralized and powerful. And this is like, and you see it down in Ferguson, they just came off, you know, pouring out. Of course, they were shooting out helicopters and stuff, so that kind of gave them a reason to go in there. But the whole point is, is that how do you feel about usurping the constitu a constitutional right, which is based on natural law? And so, uh, like I said, the libertarians brought that up. I want to know how you feel about trampling on someone's natural rights to defend um, themselves. We actually do believe that people have the right. We never said that we're limiting guns, once again. We believe people do have the right to protect themselves, but there should be regulations. Um, well, what about gun free zones where somebody can just go walking in and just open fire on little kids and have the right to protect yourself? And you cannot protect yourself because that right would We do believe that there it. should be safety incentives there, but we do believe it should be a centralized resource so that we're not splitting it up among people, but rather that there's a public safety program in place where their job is to protect um, the children. But you're still setting somebody up for harm. By being it centralized, because individuals have a right to protect themselves. So you're taking away the right of an individual to protect themselves and putting it on the hands of a government who may or may not be there. More so in the case that you're mentioning, we're just talking about making sure the resources are adequate for the staff that we have, and it's not because there is school cuts and such as support. Okay. Uh. So, um, I guess in my personal experience, most people who legally own guns, use them for recreational activities, hunting, or uh, you know, some people just like to shoot like targets at a gun range, those kinds of things. Um, however, the m bigger concern with gun violence is career criminals, organized crime, things like that. So what do your positions do to differentiate between people who own and responsibly use guns and people who don't, who own and use guns specifically for criminal activity. Well, okay, so you're talking about career criminals, like gang members and stuff like that. I mean, these these are the people who are, are running a lot of these illegal gun trades. They're the ones who, who can easily get them. Um, so regardless of anything the government does, and this goes back to, to enforcement, that regardless of anything the government does to prevent law-abiding citizens from getting guns, 
you can't stop criminals from getting them because criminals are going to break the law to get them, and they already are. So these career criminals you're talking about are already getting guns illegally. What? How would a governmental restriction on guns? You know, they're not going into a gun store and saying, "Hey, can I can I buy a gun and from then you?" Pass, and, the and then failing the background check. They're not. That's not what's happening. They're they're getting them illegally. So the way we see it, the government. When the government restricts guns, only law-abiding citizens are going to lose their rights <coughs> to have these guns. Mm -hmm. The career criminals are still going to get them regardless. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, this goes to both clubs here. Uh, I came in late, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the Democrats seem to be getting the brunt of the um, audience questions. <laughs> But to me, the plans between Republicans and Democrats don't seem all that different, aside from the magazine size. You both want the universal background checks. So I don't think you either of you guys want like legit machine guns, like 50 cows, to be legal to common people, unless I'm wrong. Uh, yes, you are wrong. There, we actually do agree with that point. Most of the positions that we are talking about are the exact same, uh, except for that You want more. licensing, registration, background checks, no, and you sit in your private cameras that you did too. <laughs> no, we don't no, want. We, we only want. We only want background checks. The checks so, are. So, what kind of piece of paper do you get when you get this background check? You would have to show the permit just so I can get my just so I can get my That's like with the registration papers. No, it's not. A registration. Okay, guys, okay. noise level. We want to be able to do this again someday. The, my main point is the Constitution says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. It seems like both clubs are infringing the right in some fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And only, only students for liberty is yeah. not. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, I mean, I have a question. If I can. Uh, sure. Ask a question. Sure. Uh, it's to both of you guys. Uh, it's a really simple question. Um, so I let's say I own a gun that you guys would both get. You know, you, you don't want to. Uh, a rocket launcher, let's say. <laughs> a rocket launcher is ridiculous, right? Um, how are you going to take that away from me? The Republicans first and the Democrats. How are you going to take away my rocket launcher? I'm actually not um, for taking away anything that's already in use. I think a grandfather clause is more effective. So what's the point if they're already going to be in use? What? It's what's really just law, um, limiting okay. Oh, okay. The, right. so, the future production. So, so what happens if you're a rocket launcher producer and you feed your family on the basis of producing rocket launchers and we'll you decide a <laughs> job training program to get into a different sector. But let's say I say I'm a pain in the butt and I want to make a rocket launcher. Well, what will you do? We'll provide the options for you. Well, and we'll, it's really just a change in the sector. Dodging the question. Then, sorry, you're dodging the question. You know you are. You're out of, it's a, you are out of a job. But there are programs. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Let's say I still make the rocket he's, launcher. He's referring to the black market. Can we just specific legislation? I think this is an important question to further discussion. I just, okay. I just want to make what, keep what it calmer, that's all. What is, is if he blatantly, if he flat out refuses to abide by your law, what will you do? Then he would go to jail for breaking the law. So you will send armed men to his house to take him to jail. For probably him. not. Probably local officials. Which is armed men. Armed men. <laughs> so you got to, our idea, our whole thing is probably to take liberties that we're going to, at the end result, whatever restrictions you put, you're going to use armed men with bigger guns than people to take guns away from people. And that's all we're saying. We're pointing out it's that It's more that so that the production of it's occurring. It doesn't matter. Because it's still, you're using it not if force. He's refusing to not, if he's refusing to stop producing it, you are going but to But if he was also producing um, an illegal substance in his basement, we would be doing the same thing. It's the production of that um, product. I'm just trying to, I'm pointing out that I understand the disconnect here that you're going to use guns to get rid of guns is pretty. But it's more so the production of it that rather than the you're going to use weapon guns to stop the production of it. Okay, can we have this? <laughs> yeah, this is for the libertarian group. Sure. Um, both of the other two groups agree that like it's it's not okay to own like I don't know the difference between like big guns and stuff like that. All right, let guys. me let me yeah. clarify because I never said that. that. I said question. that we believe there should be registration and a class three license for a fully automatic machine gun. You can still own it. You just have to get a class three license, which is, which is specifically saying you are licensed to own a fully automatic machine gun, which is a. Didn't you just say no license? You just said no license. She's going to get a chance to answer that question. Guys, we're going to. Let me answer the question. So you do agree with what it's just true, like you said, that I'm going to include both of you with questions. Where do you draw the line? You guys are big car being club with that, that, like, you're infringing upon someone else's rights if you use a gun, but you're only protecting yourself if you have a gun. Mm -hmm. So where do you draw the line between like 
having a gun that's for protection, having a gun that's for threat. Because personally, I feel like if I see someone with a handgun, it's like, okay, it's for protection. But if I see someone with a rocket launcher, like in their backpack, like then it's a threat and I'm running like hell. And then they're infringing upon my right. So where do you draw the line there between like protection and a threat? Yeah, I mean, you can eventually boil this down. Like this is kind of like the outskirts of of natural right, you know, and ideas of protection, and, and when does it when does it become aggression, and what's that point? Uh, you know, is having your finger on the button of a nuclear bot an aggression? Yeah, but is you carrying around a rocket launcher without the intent to use it? You know, I mean, is is that aggression? No, I mean, it, are you? Ha I mean, you can kill me just as easily. I can kill you with a handgun just easily with a machine gun. I mean, it's 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 pretty arbitrary for you to say that this gun is is worse than that gun when they all have the primary motive to kill. I mean, that's, I think we're that's ignoring the fact that whether you agree that like the gun is different and different gun can kill you the same way, mm -hmm. but differently, I guess. I think we live in a society where it's like commonly accepted that like a rocket launcher is just a scary thing to see like walking through well, the that's campus. The issue. And I'm scared. You could be scared of scary movies or something like that, but it doesn't mean I it's don't think to be aggression because you go It's movie, kind of my opinion, you know? but I still think it's a very commonly held belief that sure, a rocket yeah. launcher and machine gun is still a threat compared to a semi-automatic handgun. So why doesn't it scare you when? police officer or a SWAT team member has that type of firepower? I'm not saying it does or doesn't, okay. but I believe that the police are here to protect us, and I understand that there are several, several cases where they don't protect us, and they uh, overuse their power and enforce it too much, but I still give them the benefit of the doubt that they are there to protect us, rather than having a natural citizen that doesn't have the training, the testing, and everything that police go to carry that gun. The, the bottom line is the simple act of you owning a machine gun or owning a rocket launcher for this case is not aggression. I mean, it could be scary to you and it might be upsetting if your neighbor's got a tank out front or he has a rocket launcher, you might think about moving. But if he's not using that in any way that's aggressing upon you, then for us, we don't, we don't find it to be a problem. I mean, that would just be the education is that this, we have this thing that guns are bad and that these high-powered guns, that's what we're taught from a young age, maybe rightfully so. But you know, there's there's certainly a breakdown in the education there that we need to work on. But uh, you know, as far as the gun itself, no, I mean, it's, we we don't think that's a problem. Okay. Um, um, I think the thing that turns me off with the uh, with your uh, libertarian kind of viewpoint is that there's no sense of being proactive about something. Because the, the way what I'm hearing is that you know you can own a tank or you can own a rocket launcher or you can own like. Uh, a fully automatic and just have that just you know chilling and uh, I, I, who's gonna know that you're just not gonna just decide to use that someday there's no sense of being proactive it's just waiting until someone's actually aggressive so the stance sounds like well it's okay for you to own it and we're not going to do anything about it but once you start doing something once you start becoming aggressive and trying to hurt people oh okay well well then we'll stop you well, I don't want to wait until someone gets hurt for, yep. you know, for something to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a good rational fear to have that, you know, we're scared of these large, potentially damaging things, you know, weapons. But, I mean, I don't want to scare anybody here, but within 10 minutes, if I was smart enough or basically with the internet, I could go to CVS, Home Depot, and rig up explosives to kill everybody in this room if I wanted to. You know, the, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but the, the capabilities to do that are really evident in the natural world. I mean, we can't just look at this in, set, in the sense of guns. We have to look at it in explosives and all these different, I mean, even knives. You know, you can have really do damaging things at, all the time. And we're, we're at the bounds of, of people doing crazy things all the time. But what keeps us from killing each other is this natural love and affection to be peaceful and voluntary. And people might shrug that off, but the only reason why we're not all killing each other right now is because we do have somewhere in our brain saying that people... We, we need each other to survive. We need to be volunt voluntary trade and, and have peace. It's, it's the most efficient way to do things. So I mean, yeah, maybe it starts with education, it starts with treating mental illness, but it just starts with treating people that guns maybe aren't that dangerous. You know, that it's, it's, it's the, the people, it. yeah, it's the mental illness behind it, or it's the, the other issues behind it, um, <coughs> but not the gun itself. Which is why I, I, I'm, I feel bad for the Democrat you know, group. You guys have been beat up so hard tonight. Um, but I, I kind of like the idea I'm, you know, for the idea of having, you know, medical background checks for that exact same reason. Mm -hmm. Like anyone can own anything, but if we can prevent those people that have mental illnesses, if we can check up on that and prevent them from harming themselves or other people, 
how much better would that be? You know, it, it, I can't see it being a bad thing. Well, I would, I would really. point to the case of Adam Lanza, you know, in, in the Newtown right. shooting. Yeah. You know, the fact wasn't that he had the guns wasn't the problem. And, and maybe not even necessarily the mental illness wasn't the problem. The problem with Adam Lanza, in, in my opinion, was that his mother didn't properly treat his mental illness. It, it wasn't the gun, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, he was a crazy kid, he had a problem with him. But the very fact that there was someone who cared about him and loved him that didn't acknowledge that, that his friends or anybody who was connected with him didn't see these problems. And there's no amount of regulation that you can pass that's going to keep that from happening. Until we have honest discussions with Americans, people start to understand that mental illness is a problem and that we need to fix that for that situation. So, I mean, if, if you're just talking about medical background checks as far as medical illnesses, I mean, look at any of the, the major shootings that involve a medically ill person, usually they obtain them through legal means. It's very rare that they get obtain them illegally or that they would be stopped by a background check. No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, if you look at this from a dollars and cents standpoint, um, I'm an accountant, so I'm always looking for ways to save people money on taxes. Um, <laughs> if you look at if we had no gun regulations and didn't have to pay for permits, you just probably collect the simple state tax for the purchase of a gun. Do you think that the government uses, the federal government, government specifically uses gun regulation, gun permits, um, federal tax, as well as state tax um, on guns as a revenue generating tool? I really like that question. I didn't expect that question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something that people yeah. don't really yeah, bring up, but do you question. think they use it as a, a revenue-generating tool? If we took that away, they'd yeah. kind of be up a creek. They'd have to look for... No, I definitely do, especially um, more so, I think, in because they're in a higher capacity with like hunting licenses and stuff, um, or permits, rather, I think it is a revenue stream. Yeah, I mean, I mean this boil down, boils down to the, the question, does the government really care about your life? And um, you don't necessarily think that that's true. Um, so yeah, I would I would think that yes, they, they use a lot, not just gun regulations, but a lot of the regulations to create revenue. Are they really, you know, do they really need to to um, <coughs> you know collect money to, to just for these things, or are they using it? Are they spending it on other things? Are they using it to, to fund wars to line their their pockets, maybe? Like, is it is it a sin tax? Like, it's supposed to deter somebody from buying a gun because they have to pay on a three hundred dollar gun an additional eleven percent, which is thirty three extra dollars. I think it's a great that, question, but I don't think the, it's. I think it's better for like a budget question yeah, or like yeah. a revenue. Like, I don't know if that's really that pays the gun control. Well, that's like, a good I, do you think yeah. that? Do you think that that's a factor that ultimately you know the federal government says, hey, we're going to restrict this, but you know. Uh, yeah, a, a pro for us is going to be, hey, we get a few extra. I'm sure it is, but for our position, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a sin tax because you don't um, buy them in the quantities that you would buy um, no, cigarettes like for. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just like a, more like a sales tax where it, um, it just plays on top of it um, because you don't generally go out and buy it um, in an everyday kind of thing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to kind of feed off this question. Well, going back to like the black market discussion we had earlier, um, you all kind of just accepted the fact that the black market is going to happen regardless of whether we sell the guns or if we limit the guns or whatever happens with the guns, the black market is going to be inevitable. Um, why, in my opinion, that kind of sounds like the black market is inevitable. So like if people are going to sell guns, the government might as well sell them and make money off them rather than crack down on the black market and make money in other ways rather than giving them the means to get guns so that it doesn't have to go to the black market and we can profit off of it. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would say the government should be produ the government shouldn't be in the business of producing guns, but yeah, private gun, you know, distributors or manufacturers would, would sell the guns. I mean that's you you've, you've harped on it that the black market exists the reason why it's a black market is because it's an illegal good. Black market and drugs, they're illegal. So why don't we just, you know, our position people let's legalize it. Let's let's make them you can buy them from anybody, and then you eliminate the whole black market issue. You, you right. eliminate you eliminate criminals selling these guns, and, and you know, instead of eliminate criminals. Well, no, I mean you eliminate the the idea of um, you know going into a back alley and buying a gun yeah. and giving money to someone who's going to go commit a crime. Instead, you might you know it, it's the same thing with, with drugs. You know, you, you go and you, you pay a, a reputable store for the item as opposed to some guy in a back alley who isn't necessarily a good person and might spend that money. I think uh, one thing though that, that kind of bothers me about your argument when it comes to everyone being able to, to buy guns from, from anyone, okay. it, it's kind of treading the line between you know an armed citizenry is a polite citizenry and 
you know, let them fear so long as they hate. It's sort of like you're you're saying that let everyone have guns because you know everyone everyone having guns is going to be okay because then no one's going to commit crimes because everyone else has guns. But then at what point in time does it just become everyone has guns so then everyone's afraid to talk to each other? Because everyone else, you know, who knows who has a bad intention. So that's one of the arguments that it would be for background checks. I'm not against background checks. I'm not against uh, logical background checks. If, they, if it can prevent a person who's not supposed to have a gun having a gun, then I'm for it. But to the extent that it's been argued, maybe it's getting a little far. So, I mean, how can you... How are you still arguing that no legislation is is the best? Yeah, and that would just go back to we have a fundamental different disagreement on human nature. You know, I believe truly that people want to act peacefully. People want to act voluntarily. You know, that that human nature, us keeping each other alive, is the idea that we love each other and that we are beneficial. We have mutual benefit from you know trade and just existence. Um, so I don't think this arms race would happen. I think if you pull everybody in this room, if there were no restrictions on any guns tomorrow, I highly doubt maybe one person's running out to buy a gun, but I don't think it's gonna be everybody's, oh, we gotta get a gun now that machine guns are legal, I need to get a gun. It's just, it seems to be ridiculous. I mean, you, you, I mean it's not ridiculous, I mean, it's a fair question, but I don't think that fear would sweep in. Because still, you know, I might hire a private security agency or I might rely on my local police force. I mean, it, these, these things aren't gonna not exist because we eliminate all restrictions on guns. I mean, you still might have, you know, private enforcement and private security and stuff like that. All right, um, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Do you guys have any uh, closing remarks or statements or anything? Yes. Just a summary of the points. Um, are we starting? Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. Um, just in regards to what we've said tonight, our true plan here is really just not to take away guns, but rather to make sure regulations are in place. And